Uh, so, yes, I've been presenting. My name is Denis. I'm a software developer at the software. And today I would like to share with you my experience in working with the CMIC. So let's move on to the presentation. Uh, today our agenda is will consist of what is the CMIC, uh, some basic stuff that I would like to share to you, and the usage examples, which will be the most part of our presentation, and where we will create some, or I will just show the some simple, the most simple to make uh, configurations towards the more complex using different function macros, and toward, ultimately towards the stuff that will uh, download uh, our dependencies automatically and run unit tests, and that's it. So what is CMake? Uh, CMake is an open source cross-platform build system that is uh, not that is more high level than the make files or a system like this and it actually generates lets you write a little bit easier code uh, than the cmake because you don't have to describe every single uh, thing for yourself and it actually generates the make files or it could use as the backend uh, for example ninja or whatever else it is um widely uh, use it across the industry. And for example, it is um, used it in such major projects like LLVM, KDE, Boost, and many others. Uh, basically, that's it that you would want to know. So CMake basics. Before going to the actual slides, I would like to tell why I included it. Uh, so, uh, when we start to learn about new things, uh, we usually go to the documentation, we usually go to some tutorials, and CMake has quite a large number of this on its official documentation, and documentation is quite good actually, covers a lot of stuff, but unfortunately at least the default tutorials do not cover the basics of the CMake language itself, which is probably the bad thing, in my opinion, as you don't understand some important stuff uh, before starting to work with the uh, build system. Uh, so on this part, I will cover this stuff. So the most important thing that CMake has is the variables and lists. Lists are basically the same variables. There are no types, so all variables are actually just strings. And to declare a variable, you can just use the set command. To declare a list, you can use either the set of the list append commands, uh, whatever you want. Um, uh, CMake supports both includes and subdirectories. That is the way to organize your uh, project, uh, because uh, when your uh, project grows large, it is it will be uh, not easy to hold every every part of the project, every part of the configuration in the same uh, top level CMake file. You would, I presume that you would like to um, put some parts of the project into the different, uh, some parts of the configuration in the different directories, so it would be easier to you to, for you to manage it. So CMake. Uh, supports two ways to do this. You can use either includes uh, where you have to specify the relative or either a uh, full path to the file you want to include in your CMake file. Or you can use the subdirectory. Uh, the situation with subdirectory that you have um, uh, to pass the path to the a directory that exists in your project, and uh, this directory has to have the file name it exactly make list txt. Otherwise, it would not work. While whether with the uh, includes, you can actually pass uh, whatever file name you want. It doesn't really matter for it. And uh, also, the difference is that subdirectories can all always and can only work with the subdirectories, not from the other locations of uh, your system. And important thing is that subdirectories actually create another scope for your variables. 
So for example, if you have a top level CMake list, and if you have created the, some variable on your top level, uh, then you uh, create a SRC directory, as in this example, I create some other variable in this uh, sub directory, uh, in this uh, secondary CMake list file, you will have the copy of the variable from the parent, and you will have uh, your variable that you declared here available only to this CMake list. This is quite important thing. And this is uh, good because it allows you to actually uh, to not care about most part of the, uh, to take some important configuration that was configured on the top level and uh, not pollute the scope of the top level CMake as you will have a more or less clean scope on your sub CMake. Also, you have functions and macroses. So functions, uh, uh, they have a pretty similar definition. You have just to use different commands to declare them. And uh, the main difference between them is the same as with the subdirectors and includes. With macroses, you will be working on the parent scope. And with the functions, you will have another scope that is, will be available only inside this function. And also you have some flow controllers. These are if, else statements for each loops, uh, while loops, and probably something more, but this is the basic stuff that you would probably need. And that's basically it that I would like to say about the language. I think it should be enough for you to create quite complex uh, configurations. So, yeah, let's go to the usage examples. Um, I will show them in my VS code, um, not in the presentation. Uh, so here I created two repositories for my personal account uh, where I those um, examples are actually hosted. I have a application repository and library repository. Um, so let's move on towards them. Uh, yeah, so in this um, repositories, I have just a number of branches that represent different iterations from the very basic to uh, more and more complex ones. Um, I decided to do this in branches so you can easily open the pull request and see the difference between different iterations and do whatever you want. Um, so let's move on to the first application. Uh, so the most basic and most easy uh, CMake list that you will have is will probably look like this. Uh, so you have to specify the CMake minimum uh, required command, where you have just to specify that you will be you will allow only CMake's version point three uh, three uh, three points twenty four or higher. Um, then you have to declare the project, which is quite important thing. And also I have there a couple of uh, com compile options. Uh, I have there is a list of source files and uh, add executable command that actually creates the binary that we are going to run. Important thing about the, yeah, the, the interesting thing about the CMake is it actually has the debuggers, at least in the Visual Studio and on Visual Studio code. So we could take a look of how this works. So here we can see the local variables that are declared in this scope. And as we can see before we executed this comment, we have a bunch of directories that are quite important. Uh, that you will probably would like to use in the future and some other stuff that is related to our systems, you make question and so on. Uh, after we execute this project, we suddenly have much more variables and sometimes it uh, creates even more variables. This uh, basically configures uh, everything related to your uh, architecture related to the size of the pointers which is used which it uses for different integrations and other stuff uh, that uh, you would like to be configured and it is sometimes important to set some flags for example the 
architecture of uh, the project that you want to compile uh, before the project. So this way it would be, you will uh, eliminate some issues with the integrations uh, if you use them. And very, then there is uh, nothing special about the source files. And after it adds the executable, it actually creates the target, which won't show at uh, this case because it is the latest uh, part, but uh, I will show it later. So it just uh, created our configuration. We can just build target. And that's basically it. But for some reason, something went wrong. Oh, yeah, because I probably need to delete this configuration. I have some cache. Yeah. And we can run it. but. So there is nothing interesting to show here. So let's move on to the next iteration. Uh, the next iteration is adding a subdirectory. Uh, so here I have another directory inside my project called model, which has another CMAKELIST.txt, which has the library called model, and which has the uh, source files, obviously, and some header files. So in this case, uh, it will simply use include this uh, file. There is no need to add anything to the uh, header passes. Uh, it is quite simple. Uh, so all that you need to do is just to include the uh, add subdirectory. And after this, you have to use a link, target link uh, libraries comment and just uh, link your application with this uh, library. Which is interesting about this thing is that this in this case, the name of the library actually is the same as the name of this CMake target that I created. And important thing about the CMake target is that they are actually have some information related to them. And as you can see here, I use the uh, access specifier, which is important, which has to be placed before the actual libraries or either headers. And it means that this, um, this target, which is using the model target, will be uh, uh, dependent on this, uh, on all that this target actually exports. And yeah, I will show this right in the next example, but before going towards it, I would like to show that it actually adds some, uh, yeah, I need to configure with debugger, uh, that in this case, we have created this target and we can see that uh, it exists. It has a large number of options. Some properties are hidden. Some properties are displayed on this debugger. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, let's move on. So the next, next thing is adding version to the, uh, to our program. Uh, so yeah, now our CMake file uh, looks a little bit different because now we have this configure file thing that actually is able to take this file that we pass as the first parameter as an example. And after this, it will uh, generate, uh, not example, but more like a template. And then it will be able to uh, generate this config.h file with all the variables that we pass it to this file as resolved that are known to the CMake. So for example, we can see this file. Uh, this is just a simple uh, C header, we have the project name, project version, and other uh, stuff that is uh, will be taken from this uh, options that would pass it to the CMake. And uh, all this will be resolved. So after the configuration, uh, yeah, I need to configure it. Uh, here we can see that I put it into the config directory. And here we can see all the stuff that we configured. And 
also I am using this model right here uh, in the uh, model uh, library. Uh, and we can see that here I decided just for the sake of an example uh, to use the absolute import in this case. So normally it would not work. So for this thing to work, I actually had to add this uh, CMake source dear config uh, option to the uh, target include uh, directories comment with the public specifier. So it means that this uh, directory will be included for the model itself when it compiles. And uh, it will be added to the includes for all the models that use it, for all the targets that use it. And uh, obviously, this is the our um, main project that requires it. So it will actually compile in this case. Um, yeah, we can move on. Another thing is adding the custom function. Uh, so here I created an, uh, another uh, file uh, with the .cmake resolution, the .cmake directory, which I included because I want it to be visible. And here I created just a simple function that I commonly use on my project uh, because it just simplifies a little bit for me uh, the process to uh, to specify all the dependencies, uh, all the um, source files that I need. So it basically takes uh, the name of the model or path to the, not model, but the source file, and it just appends the .h.cpp and puts it to the different um to the different um lists and then it shares it with the parent scope so it could be written as the macros as well and this way you would not have to specify this parent scope sharing but in this case i decided it to do this way and you can uh, so you can see that it is included in the top levels you make and then it is included, uh, it is used in this model where I have this model.hcpp, um, which is just resolved here and well, which is populates this list. Uh, that's it about this thing. Uh, so external library. Um, Yeah, so for this example, we have to go to the library repository in the beginning. So here we have a simple library then just does um, print that just prints the path to the current, uh, the current working path that has the standard include uh, file, which has the do something declaration. Uh, so the CMake file for this library is quite simple. It just represents reassembles the same thing that we had with the uh, with the application, but for the library. So this thing is quite simple. Um, yeah, so we can configure it. We can compile this library. Uh, And we obviously have to put the result of the compilation to the resulting library and headers to our application. So what is interesting about this plain CMake approach that just uses this library as the, in this case, not as the target, but as the name of the, uh, as the name of the library. So it will basically look for it. Uh, we'll try to add the leap like this and dot a or whatever is appropriate for your system and we'll try to look in the default search buttons or other passes if you include any. So in this case, if I'm to configure this project, it will actually configure, but it wouldn't be able to build it because we obviously don't have the headers, we don't have the 
library itself. So there's no chance for it to uh, to work. But uh, the CMake itself, uh, the CMake configuration itself works. Uh, we can now copy the library. So we need to use CP. Oh uh, yeah, we need this library. We need to unzip it. So now in the build directory, we have this. We should have this library, but looks like I put something. Oh, cannot open. Oh yeah, that's a, a bit different example. Yeah, so basically here we have to manually copy the includes. Uh, but for some reason it doesn't, uh, because there is no source directory. And we also have to copy the uh, library itself. So it would be named like this. I need to put it here. So now I have this library. Now I have includes. I have already added this in, uh, link directories to this build location and also include directories here. So it will be visible for the project. We don't have to reconfigure anything that just was configured just right. So we can just try to build it. And it works. And this might be fine for the most projects, but when you have a lot of dependencies, a lot of stuff to think about, this might be not really uh, pleasant to work with as you have to manually copy manually to manage all this stuff. So we can move further and we can uh, start using the um, CMake packaging stuff, the CMake packaging functionality. So let's move on to the library before going to the stuff. Yeah. Uh, so now this CMake looks much harder and it is much more, uh, it has to include much more stuff, which I mostly put on the, in the, um, this .cmake uh, files. The first one is prepare for installation, which looks quite complex, but it is just a wrapper for the default in, uh, include uh, and install commands uh, that are just described on the default you make tutorial. It just makes things for me a little bit easier. Uh, I do not want to try to uh, describe everything here for you, but uh, it just takes, uh, basically just configures which files had to be placed in the destination uh, installation location. So we do this for headers. We do this for the, uh, leap for the binary of the library itself. And we also do this for the CMake models, for the CMake packaging stuff. So yeah, what is the CMake packaging itself? It actually, yeah, CMake is able to create uh, some uh, configuration files that might be installed uh, along with the library. It is usually installed in the leap uh, slash cmake directory. And this stuff is responsible, uh, is, uh, uh, is required to allow the cmake to load this library as the target, not, not as just a simple, um, uh, simple include, uh, simple uh, binary of the library, but, but as the cmake target. So this way it can actually preserve some information about the imports, about the um, libraries that are required to work with this library. And so you can at the configuration time see whether you have everything ready. Um, yeah, uh, most of the stuff is actually just a template uh, from, the, from the CMake tutorial, as I mentioned before. And here we have some more stuff. We just uh, have to uh, include 
uh, include directories. Here we have interest in thinking about this interface. Yeah, interface is another specifier that tells that it won't be available for the library itself or for the target itself, but it is available for the uh, built in uh, for the um, target that are going to link to it. And uh, this exact uh, kind, um, this is just a technically something similar to the Tyranor operator where you have, uh, when you can decide on the configuration time, whether uh, you are using the built interface or install interface. And if you are installing this library, it will look in the include directory. And if you are in uh, the, haven't installed it and just, for example, add it as the git submodel uh, your library to your project, uh, you can use um, this includes directly from the uh, from the library uh, from the source files that you made uh, as the git submodel, which might be quite useful, for example, to debug the library uh, at some point. Here we have the call of this prepare for installation function that I showed before. And we have some additional configuration, uh, which is related to the CPAC. Uh, CPAC is just an utility that comes uh, along with the CMake. Um, it is able to generate a lot uh, of different archive formats or even uh, just generally artifacts. Uh, for example, it is uh, definitely able to create targeted ad files. It is able to create an RPM and I'm sure much more. And uh, this is just easy to package all the stuff and uh, this way and avoid uh, manual gathering of the stuff. Yeah, mm, so it is interesting that CMake not only allows you to use this uh, CPAC, but just uh, to use the CMake install command, which could be run after you built your project. Probably you have uh, been uh, using some open source um, libraries or applications that use CMake. And you could just, after the build, use the CMake install command uh, to install it in some appropriate location that is configured. But if you don't want to install it, you can, in fact, uh, use the CPAC to create an artifact that could be uh, installed manually by the user. So let's configure it. Uh, let's do the rebuild. Now we can, we actually already in the build directory, so we can use the CPAC. Oh yeah, we're not in the build directory actually. Uh, okay, so it tells us that it's generated this package and we can finally use it. And yeah, uh, important thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, to configure the package for the CMake, you have to add this config.cmake.in, which is not the same as this one which has the different purpose and it will be used to generate those files that CMake used to uh, imp uh, to import the targets into the different project. And it is important here to specify the actual name of the library, not the, for example, as I did here, I put the name of, as the uh, variable. Uh, so this library name variable and uh, because otherwise it won't uh, work when you uh, import it from the different project as it just won't have this uh, variable. Um, so yeah, let's try to move on to the application. We can try to configure it just as, as it is before uh, actually installing the library. So let's configure it. And we can see that now we have an error. Uh, so we can see that this find package call caused this error. And that's because this find package was trying to find our library. 
uh, I told this comment that this library is required and that it could look for it in the default passes and also in this CMake binary tier, uh, my library, which is basically this build directory that I had here. Uh, build directory slash my library. Uh, there's nothing new aside from this. Uh, you can see that I removed all the stuff that was related to the uh, explicitly specifying the include locations of the link uh, directories as we don't need it anymore uh, because our target actually has all this stuff built in. So now we just need to copy the uh, target that we need to unpack it. Uh, so now we have this library, you know, we have this includes, we have a leap, we have this CMake directory that has those four files. Uh, and now we can configure it. Uh, yeah. So now the configuration is done. We can just build a target. And yeah, it builds, it works, and this is a little bit easier uh, to do, but still not as easy as you might see it with the stuff like uh, NPM when you can just say install this package and that's it. Um, yeah, let's move on. So for example, for the next example, I actually created the installation code, the, the code that will manually, uh, that it will by itself download this stuff from my repository. Uh, so we can see here in the library that I have uh, created this release with this uh, my library as an artifact. Uh, and now I can download it. So before trying to configure it, I will uh, go over it. So at this level, everything looks just the same as it was before, but we have this uh, repository tag information included uh, just to specify which version of library uh, I need. Uh, this information is obviously not enough to build this URL because basically we need to download this. Uh, and all the stuff I put into the CMake uh, folder, it is not, now much larger than it was before. So here I have configuration related to this library. So just tell that, uh, that I have uh, this uh, URL. I have a number, uh, I need to install the artifact called this way. And there is a repository code related to this library. And also I check whether the, the stock was set to avoid uh, the cases when we cannot, uh, to avoid some ugly errors, which probably might happen in the future. Uh, so to make this thing work, uh, you actually need to overwrite the default behavior of the find package, which CMakes, uh, CMake ob uh, allows you to do. And to do this, you have to pass another argument to the CMake, which is CMake project of level uh, includes. And uh, here you can see that I passed this my provider.cmake file. Uh, those includes are probably required for different things, but I only uh, worked with them in the case of the provider. And this uh, CMake file that you pass here will be executed before your file. And uh, like, and at the, somewhere at the configuration and the startup of the CMake itself. So we can now look at this provider, which quite simple actually as most of the um, stuff related uh, here uh, that related to the downloading and in installation. And it might look a little bit uh, difficult, 
but it actually quite simple. It just configures everything that it needs to uh, call this vget command with the required repository and uh, then to unzip this uh, artifact that we will have and install it into some location. Uh, yeah, interesting thing that I would like to mention is that CMake actually allows you to build the libraries from the values of, uh, not the libraries, but the names of variables from the names of another, uh, from the var variables, like from the var values of another variables. Uh, so in this case, I have this um, library name variable. Uh, I would like to resolve this variable into the something that is uh, under it. So it will be resolved uh, in, in my case in my library. And uh, it, this command will actually check for the uh, something like my library repository code and we'll try to dereference de it later. Um, okay, so yeah, about this provider. So this provider uh, just defines the directory where I want to put those dependencies, as I call them. Um, it also has to specify those to CMake model pass and prefix pass uh, comments, uh, not comments, but uh, variables or lists. Um, and then we have just to use, uh, to call the CMake language um, comment and set our dependency provider to this comment, to this macros in this case. And as you can see, it just calls my uh, download and install library uh, function or macros that I created with some uh, with the package name that is going to be passed to this provide dependency um, function. And when we are going to configure it, we can see that configuration time uh, takes a lot longer, like uh, previously it was zero seconds, now it took 1.7 seconds. Uh, and that's because it actually download, downloaded my library. So we have, uh, we have here this artifact and we have here uh, the includes that were automatically installed uh, libraries, uh, CMake files and all the stuff that it actually needs. And we can now easily build it. Yeah, that is it about the uh, downloading. And now I can move to the final part is just adding some, a couple of unit tests, not just one unit test, but see how can CMake help you with the unit tests. So we don't need the CMake library. We just need to take a look on the CMake list. Here I have this enable testing uh, command. Uh, yeah, about the test itself. Uh, I installed the uh, Google test framework on this, uh, on this uh, container. So he, uh, the test itself is quite simple. It just a test that always fails. And that's it. So, uh, yeah, the most uh, the easiest way to build this test is just to create another executable, uh, pass by required source files and to link the gtest. Uh, yeah, as you can see here, the gtest itself was found with the find package uh, too, and that is possible because, uh, as I remember, the CMake has some scripts to find some common, some widespread libraries, for example, like gtest uh, itself. So it is actually able to find it uh, from the installation location, for example, just to show how did I install this gtest. I just uh, downloaded it, built it with the simple CMake and also you can see that here I 
after the build, I told uh, CMake to install it. Uh, yeah, so it would be easy, but uh, it might be a little bit complicated then to find those tests in the in your project, especially if they are hidden in some subdirectories, not uh present on the top levels you make and especially if you have a couple of them spread it across all your project in this case uh, it will be uh, located just here but uh to simplify this process a little bit uh, you can use this enable test testing command and you have to add this add test command for each test for each test executable that you are going to work with and just configure it. And yeah, we obviously have to build it. And after the build, we can go to the build location. We can use another command that comes with the CMake, which is ctest. Uh, yeah, it was still in the broken directory for some reason. So here we can see that it actually managed to run this test. We can see that this test fails and we can, we see that output is a little bit different from the uh, default output of the G uh, Google tests. Uh, and we can add, for example, this option to show the full output on failure. So this way we have a little bit more information and also the ctest for a uh, comment has a lot of different uh, parameters uh, you can play with so that's basically it for the presentation that's basically all that i have uh, so probably you have some questions i have two well probably one question and one suggestion regarding the tests uh, you use this command to specify each test that should be visible. Uh, CMake provides you an ability to just specify the target name of your test and all tests in this target will be automatically added. For that, you can use gtest discover test and specify the name. So the lines 38 till 41 can be uh, replaced by just one line. Okay. And about the question uh, regarding the seed pack, I'm not aware of such utility, so I'm interested in, can it be used as a dependency manager? Currently, we have a project where we use uh, CMake plus VC package as a dependency manager. So I'm interested if it's possible to use seed pack instead of VC package. Uh, depends on your projects, probably you can do this, but I suggest that you, first of all, uh, you could try to look for the integration of the CMake and uh, VC package, as I am aware that there is definitely a provider that should be supplied with the CMake, uh, like I showed you, like this, my provider, but something uh, that will work with the VC package automatically. Okay, thank you.